So I finally made my kitchen boxes. It involved a lot of planning, measuring all the different parts, and calculating everything so it would fit into the space at the back of the van. Unfortunately, I couldn't film in the wood shop I was using, though maybe that was fortunate as I needed all my concentration to keep track of what I needed to cut and in what order to assemble things in. But there's still a lot of work to do finishing assembling the boxes, and I can show you that. First thing I want to show you are these D-rings that I bought off Amazon. They're made for camera rigs, and I'm using them with these threaded inserts I got from Lee Valley. While I still had everything in the woodshop, I clamped the boxes together and pre-drilled the holes for the shafts of the D-rings. Now I just need to drill the bigger holes on this side for the inserts. The inserts are screwed in using an Allen key. The little fins on them bite into the wood so that it holds tightly. I'm using 3 8 of an inch thick Baltic birch plywood, which is very strong and stable, but is a bit thin for these inserts. So as you can see, they stick out a bit on this side, but I can cut them off with a hacksaw blade. I'll have to sand these marks off, but they won't show too much because they're on the inside. On this side, I have made some countersunk holes so that the heads of the D-rings can fit flush below the surface. And I made them a bit oversized so I can get my fingers in to lift up the ring. I chose to use these so that if I wanted to take the boxes apart, I could do it without needing any tools. Now I'm going to take them apart again to get them ready to varnish. Each box has handholds so that they're easier to lift. There are a few little gaps here and there, as well as places where I got some tear out from the table saw blade I was using. There are also the spots where I did not plan ahead properly and had to drill or cut holes after the boxes were assembled, so I'll have some more tear out to fix on the inside. I'm going to do an overall sanding on all the boxes to get everything smooth especially on the spots with the wood putty. I want to take off any rough edges and fix up any spots where things didn't line up exactly. For these ventilation holes, I'm going to need to do a little hand sanding. Now I'm going to take off all the dust with a damp cloth. I'm using a water-based varnish which is important because I don't have any ventilation here and it's also easier for cleanup since I don't need to use any solvent. I can take a break while the first coat dries. I'm going to switch to a finer sandpaper for the next round of sanding. This time I just want to go over everything very lightly, just to take away any roughness from where the wood grain was raised by the varnish. I'm going to use a tack cloth this time to get all the very fine dust before the next coat of varnish. I've done two more coats of varnish and it's time to assemble the pull-out shelf for the stove. I've cut an inset for the hinge thickness and I need to measure and mark my piano hinge. And then I can cut it with my hacksaw. Next I'll mark the holes and drill some pilot holes for my screws. This is how the drop-down front for the stove compartment will work. It pulls out a little bit and then folds down. Next, I'm going to mark the position of the feet on the stove and drill some shallow holes with a Forstner bit.
This will give a positive lock for the position of the stove on its shelf. These little fasteners are made for storm windows. Not that anyone has storm windows anymore. I'm going to position them here at the top corner of each box and then drill a pilot hole and screw them into place nice and snugly. These will keep the drawers closed so that nothing flies open or rattles around while we're driving. Next is the latch for the food storage bin. I'll mark the center and position the latch and drill some more pilot holes and screw it into place. Then I'll do the same for the bottom half of the latch. Now it's all done. I can put it all back together and I can show you how everything works. For water, I'm just using a 10 liter aqua pack container I bought from Canadian Tire. Early on, I thought about using a pump, but it didn't seem worth it for the size of the system. This way, the container just slides out to be refilled and this front piece keeps it in place. For the mini sink, what I've used is a stainless steel pan that's made for a restaurant steam table. I had to cut it down to fit a little bit because it's longer than the water container. Down here we have a drawer for cutlery, and knives and cooking utensils. A little garbage container goes here. And up top, I've made a drawer that's deep enough for small sized condiments to stand up right in. This is how the stove shelf goes. The stove fits on and the whole thing slides away out of sight. This top section is used for food storage. Things like apples and bread and other dry goods. I've added ventilation holes so things don't overheat in the summer. Using the water is very straightforward and there's room underneath for filling pots or taller containers. The little mini sink is just for quick rinses or hand washings. For actually washing dishes, we found there's usually a sink at the campground we can use. And if not, we have a collapsible dish pan that we set up on a table. So this is the stove we chose to use. I got it from Amazon and I picked it because it can be used with either butane or propane. Right now I have it set up for propane. If I open it up here and here, I can show you how the propane cylinder is connected. There's an opening that runs between the two boxes for the hose. And I have a little valve at this end so I can shut off the propane at the tank. This is the hose that came with the stove. It has a regulator but no shutoff valve. And this is an extension hose made by burns matic It's usually used with a propane torch and it does have a shutoff valve. Most of the time I would probably use the butane canisters since they are much more compact and I like the canister disconnect system on the stove. But I like that we can have both so that we can use propane if we are camping in colder weather. Another little mod I made was to add magnets here so that the stove top piece sits much more securely onto the stove and doesn't come off if I'm moving the stove around. Now you might be wondering what that big box is on the right that I haven't talked about. That's for my cooler. I'm saving that for the next video so I'll have time to show all the details of how I'm going to insulate it and how I plan to wire up the thermostat that will control the thermoelectric cooling element. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified when the next video comes out.